Rishi Sunak has secured a big victory last night after his plan to ban anyone born after 2009 buying cigarettes passed in the Commons with a 316 vote majority. It could mean that anyone turning 15 from this year could eventually be affected. Now, it's caused a bit of a mixed reaction amongst the people we spoke to about it. Yeah, it's good because kids can't smoke then, can they? But people do get people to go to the shop, don't they, to buy them, so it's not really going to stop anyone, is it? And I personally think cigarettes can't be banned. People will go mad. I think it does set a good example. I think it's good. It prevents a lot of younger people from smoking in the future, and I think that is good. It's a good thing. Uh, joining us now is Times Radio's James Hansen and broadcaster and commentator in his blue tie. He knows his place, Matthew Stadlin. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you? Good morning. Very well, thank uh, you. Okay. Jay, let's start with you about this smoking ban. Um, Nick and I have different views on this, mm. and I get, I absolutely get the health issues, but I have a concern. Apart from the fact that I'm not sure how you possibly, possibly are able to legislate this and doing... So if you if you get to 42 and you were born at the wrong time, a 43-year-old could buy a... Four, it'll go underground. Are we essentially saying to people that as a society we know it's... It's, it's not good for you, but we're going to say you can't do it. Well, essentially, this is trying to kill off smoking in this country. We've already seen a massive cultural shift after the, the ban on outdoor uh, public smoking back in the mid-noughties in the number of people smoking in decline. And Rishi Sunak says, look, you know, look at the impact that smoking-related illnesses have on the health service, for example. This will be better for society in the long term if we do it. I mean, the kind of idea is that you know, anyone who's not currently smoking, if you've got a kid who... Obviously, if they're a kid, hopefully it's not smoking. Mm. Would you want them to start smoking? No. Almost every person would say, of course they wouldn't want their kid to start smoking. So Rishi Sunak saying, well, let's not give them the option. But you're right, Jeremy, there are practical challenges here. And it'll be interesting. This is a world first. New Zealand were going to do the same. Then they had a change of government. The Stubbed new government came in and got rid of it. So there'll be a lot of other countries looking on at the UK and, and seeing if this actually works in practice. Matt, I'm really interested. Your take on this, I'd probably know what it's going to be. I actually think it's a good idea. We should reassure people who are smoking, if that's the right word, already, people who are already smokers, this doesn't affect them. So you can yeah. continue smoking. So if, you, if you're a lifelong smoker, or even if you only took it up last year, you're allowed to carry on smoking. This is impact. Allowed, Matt. That's what worries me. And, and, and James got me. He's absolutely right. You know, I've got six kids, as it says on the front of the sun this morning. It's on a velo. Kyle, a dad for the sixth time. Um, we'll talk about that in a bit. They're a bit um, out of date, aren't they? I got, I don't know, yeah, thanks, it's Kyle Walker. Um, we don't, I, I, of course you don't want your kids to smoke. I just have no. a, a concern on, that we're going to get more There's a good more line like this. in this, right? There's a good line. Was it the health secretary who said there is no freedom in addiction? How do you say, how was your response to that, yes. Jeremy? Clever clogs? <laughs> What do you mean there's no, no freedom free in addiction? Well, you're not really you're, you're free, are you? If you're addicted to smoking a cigarette, then do, you're, not, do you you're drink? not free do then you drink? either. I do, but we all... And what would happen if I, I said... What if, what if the government said, alcohol isn't good for you, we're banning it? So what would you do? Would so you stop drinking? Would you legalise cannabis? There's an interesting point that we talked well, about. What's your answer? Yeah. I don't know the answer I wouldn't, to that. But you you might. wouldn't. I wouldn't legalise cannabis, but you might. I've always believed that cannabis will then lead to stronger drugs, so I've had a problem with it. Right. I guess... I well, guess... how about the fact that smoking kills He's you? He's got it about him today, two, hasn't he? Two, I know, he's ready. He's so in the morning. Two-thirds of people who smoke, yes, but that's they end like up dying saying anything it. to you, James. You, 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 James, sorry, what's she called? Matthew, sorry. I think it's, so. You can't... I'm just asking you if society ought to be able to say to us, it's not good for you, therefore, we're banning it. That's all I'm asking. Mm. Do you think that's acceptable? I'm saying there's a, it's quite clever, this, because although there is... Clever? Th there's an argument that this, this is going to create a, a sort of two classes of adults, because some people, as you've rightly identified, you know, when a 15-year-old today becomes 43, a 44-year-old will be able to buy a cigarette. And, a four, that in itself and sounds give it to the 43-year-old! But, but that aside, there is quite an important difference here between saying to people who already smoke, sorry, you've got to give... You've yeah, yeah. got to give something up that you've been doing for decades, mm and saying to people who are young now, you can't start smoking. I don't think exactly, you can the, say that to people. The two alternatives yeah. are quite difficult, aren't they? It's either yeah. everybody has to stop smoking yeah. as of tomorrow or carry on as we are. And I don't think either of those are necessarily good And options. actually, what's interesting is, you know, when a 42-year-old can't smoke but a 43-year-old can legally, will in practice the 43-year-old be smoking? Or will we have seen in the 30 to 40 years until then a massive cultural shift would that it, actually would it all, people give Well, up. that's a really interesting point, Matt. I'll put that to Matt. Would, would, it, would it disappear? I mean, I was saying yesterday on the show, I mean, how, to me, this is abhorrent now. And I don't smoke. I was, I was thinking about, like, we used to smoke on aeroplanes. Can you yeah. believe that? Mm. Uh, what, the thought of an aeroplane or, in fact, a restaurant nowadays is, is abhorrent. So maybe James is right. Maybe in 20 years, the whole thing will be stuffed uh, out. Excuse uh, the pun. No, I think you're absolutely spot on, James. 
And actually, when I was growing up, when I was sort of 18, 19, even 17, starting going clubbing, you'd come home and, and you would stink Dink of, of cigarettes, even yeah. if you've never smoked a cigarette in your life, yeah. as I have not. And that was a, a gross thing. Uh, he's one of them. No, but it's true, isn't it? You don't want to come back and, and then the next well, morning, all your clothes... you have every... on your coat from the cloak room. <laughs> exactly. I remember Nowadays, that. you just get your drink spiked, don't you? It's just like that in a nightclub. Well, listen, not... it's a, I have to say, it's, I, it's a really interesting topic because, of course, health-wise, and you made a really good point about the health service, there's no argument. And I'm not sitting here saying, oh, you know, actually, I don't understand those arguments. I do. I just... It concerns me that we're getting to a point it's, where we're telling people what they can't do. In fact, tobacco do. use is the UK's single biggest preventable mm. cause of death, killing two two-thirds of long-term users and causing 80,000 deaths every single year. You look at the UK's response mm. in terms of our freedoms yeah. to COVID, you know, and we're talking yeah. about similar numbers per year. And it's popular. This is the thing. This policy yeah, actually no, it is popular. holds really well with voters. Yes, there are a lot of smokers who'll be watching thinking, no, I can't stand this policy. What's Rishi Sunak doing? It's the nanny state, etc., etc. Liz Truss in the Commons last night called it uh, nannying control freakery. Read the room, Liz. And, and some people may, may interpret it that way. But actually, it's very popular with people. The British public, controversial as it may sound, quite like banning things. And they're do in they? favour of this. Yeah, they do. They do. There's an authoritarian streak <laughs> to the British public. Yeah. Wow. Polit politically, this is a legacy for Sunak, even if it wasn't in the manifesto. Why didn't he make it one of the five points? You would have got a tick quickly this <laughs> morning. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, stop, stop the smoking. smoking. Didn't said, stop the boat. Stop the smoking. When I said boats, what I meant was... Smoking, right, yeah, We're going to move on to a slightly <laughs> different topic now because the National Conservative... Uh, was it a conference? Yes, an international conference taking place in Brussels... Well, the police attempted to shut it down. Well, three of them. Yes. So the National Conservatism Conference, there was one in the UK last year in London. There have been several across Europe over recent years, and it attracts right-wing speakers from across the world. Notably, yesterday, Suella Braverman and Nigel Farage were attending, but then the left-wing mayor of Brussels decided that he would shut down the event over fears that it would somehow stoke division and hate and because of crowd concerns. And understandably, this has gone down very badly with many people, with their including president Nigel Farage. And yeah. their president, not yeah. their prime minister or something, gone, gone yeah. down remarkably And I think badly. it's a fair point. Look, whether you agree with the likes free of Nigel speech. Farage, Suella Braverman, whatever, you know, if free speech means anything, it means allowing the people you disagree with most strongly to express their views. But clearly this mayor in Brussels, whether he was playing to his own political base, maybe it's popular with people in Belgium to shut down these kind of events, but it's provoked a really strong reaction from people. Yeah. All over Europe. Just first, quick, we've got to put a bit of context on this. We we do have laws in place that mean, for example, in this country, if the Home Secretary doesn't like someone, thinks that they are going to be disruptive to public order, they can ban them. So, for example, I don't think anyone here or listening, I hope, would think we should give platforms to radical Islamist clerics. Now, I'm not comparing Farage to that, and I think this is pretty disgraceful. I don't think this should have been stopped at all. I mean, I debate with Farage plenty of times. Mm. Actually, this is, I mean, Nigel will be absolutely loving this. The front page this of the Telegraph this morning. He thought, just... This, he, is, he, this is red meat. Railing yeah. against the Brussels mm. elite. Can you think of a more perfect story for him? Uh, and a more perfect place for it to have happened. Well, exactly. Because that, of, yeah. of everything you thought. Can I just... Can I, can I just, just check, though? They didn't sorry. shut it down. They didn't... The police well, they didn't sort go of inside. did. They, they stopped, right. they stopped, they stopped new people attending. Yeah, and they right. stopped yeah. caterers going in. Farage was able to finish his speech. They didn't actually haul him off the stage. They, he said the police would have to come actually drag me off. You, the you're stage. right. It, it was an absolute given for him. It was. It was a godsend. Can I just bring you on to a subject that that's, that we want to talk about briefly? Um, all, all the left wingers that I say this to go like this, and they go, "Oh, I honestly believe this. This Angela Rayner thing ain't mm. going anywhere." And, and Matt, I said yesterday to a mixed reaction, mm. I quite like Angela Rayner. I think mm. she's a breath of fresh air. But why she doesn't just just provide what needs providing and close this down. So the last thing the Labour Party needs, they, they seem to have been, in, in my opinion, very slick and very organised mm. yeah. in the last few months. This, but I've got this theory, which nobody agrees with. I think this suits Starmer down to the bleeding ground, man. I don't think... I know everybody says, oh, she's in the inner four. I don't buy that. I don't think she's ever been his pick, and I think he's allowing this to happen, but I don't know why she doesn't close it down, because the longer it goes on, she looks like she's lying. I, actually, I don't think that's... Right. First of all, I think that she could close it down, or if, if she decides, actually, she has done something wrong... You know, 15 it. years ago, admit it. And she says she hasn't. If she, she could, it's in her gift to shut this down. I suspect with Starmer, he'd far rather her inside the tent. 
I think she's an electoral asset. I, I think agree. she's useful. I think what if she, I get, what if she goes? Would he be concerned so, so, about another left wing? If, if she turns out to have been found to have done something wrong, and I keep coming back to the fact that she says she hasn't, then I would say that this is sort of weakness, on, actually, on Starmer's point. He's been very strong, mostly, mm. and very competent. But I would say this is more weakness and possibly even incompetence, not quite knowing how to control a big story so close to him, interesting. rather than him deliberately allowing it to go on. It'll be interesting to see how it develops. But thank you both for joining us in the studio. Thank you, gang. James Hansen from Times Radio and political commentator Matthew Stadman.